Good morning and welcome to the show. It's Monday morning. It's not Valentine's Day, uh, even though you thought it might have been. A computer glitch there. Sorry about that. Just before the start of the show, as they call it in broadcasting, a digital error. Sometimes these things happen. That right, Jason? Sometimes they happen. They do indeed. They do indeed. <laughs> not much you can do about it. You just have to no. make sure. and uh, Go with the flow. Go with the flow. That's exactly it. And we're going to go with the flow today. We have a lot coming up on the show today. Ian O'Connell has just arrived in studio. He is a Kerry teenager. was paralysed from the neck down and he's going to be coming on in a little while. He's an inspirational talker. He's going to be talking to um, students and to different people tonight. Derek McGrath has helped arrange for him to come in. In a second, I'm going to be talking to David Cullinan from Sinn Féin and also to Jason Murphy of Fianna Fáil about the very latest dancing that's going on in terms of the, um, I suppose, the dance floor that is the Oireachtas and the polit- political scene at the minute. We're also going to be talking to Mary Kennedy straight from the dance floor last night of Dancing with the Stars. She has got through to the next round. We want to hear from you regarding what you think of these matters. Speed cameras, are they a deterrent? Are they a good idea? Extending them, or is it just a money-making exercise? Caroline Flack, the whole social media abuse thing. Massive, massive issue. Um, we spoke with Mary Butler about it last week and different times in the past. Uh, Councillor James Tobin made a comment at the council last week saying the most important thing was the, the milk bo- uh, the, the worst thing for rural Ireland was getting rid of the milk bottles. Was that it, Jason? I was sitting next to him when he said... Now, what did he say again? I he said, he said uh, the, the 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 worst thing that happened to Ireland over the last um, I don't know sixty or seventy years was was the abolition of the milk bottle. The abolition of the milk bottle. But and, I think and, it has to be looked at in the context of the conversation. And the milk happening. delivery, the milk delivery rounds. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if anybody wants to comment on that, please do. Oh eight three double three double three nine seven five. Also, we're going to be talking about Harry Gregg, the great Man United. Uh, uh, goalkeeper and seals calling of seals people are texting in already about this firstly I want to check if we've got David Cullen on the line good morning David Cullen good morning uh, Damien thanks very much for joining us this morning um, you're in Dublin this morning we'd hope to have you in studio but it's just good to have you on the line again how are you keeping alright I'm doing well Damien yes I'm part of the Sinn Féin team here we had a meeting that started at 9 o'clock this morning so I just stepped out to take this call and honestly, we're preparing for the week ahead in terms of meeting with various parties, with independents, and trying our best to form a government of change, which we believe is what people voted for. And how does that negotiating team work, David? Just explain that, like in terms of what are you doing this morning? Are you actually meeting parties or are you actually putting forward potential, I suppose, issues that might come up in terms of any negotiations? Well, I suppose there's a number of different parts to it, Damien. Yes, of course, we have to meet parties. So there's a number of follow-up meetings that will take place between the Greens, the Social Democrats. I was in contact with about a half dozen independent TDs over the course of the weekend to sound them out in terms of what they see as uh, the best outcome going forward. Uh, I think most commentators and indeed most of the politicians I've spoken to agree that the overwhelming response from the electors in this election was that they want change. That's a clear desire. I think most people, obviously maybe not everybody in Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael, but most people agree that a, a combination of Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael and government is not changed and it's more of the status quo. And I suppose there is a heavy responsibility now on Sinn Féin to, to reach out to as many people as possible. And the only way I think that a government of change can be blocked is if Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael come together with either independents or a smaller party as well. So obviously we have our job to do. Part of my job as well will be to reach out to external individuals and I hope to meet with the CEO of the council with Ono Blin later in the week to talk about the Urban Regeneration and Development Fund, to talk about the university, to talk about uh, all of the issues that are important regionally and locally here in Waterford, which is very important if you're putting a programme for government together. Equally, I'll be meeting trade union leaders and business groups. So all of that's part of that engagement that I think has to be done. And if we're serious about forming a government, then you have to be serious about that engagement. But you also have to bring it back to the politics of the election campaign, Damien. And I said very clearly during the course of that campaign, after the election, if I was given a mandate, I'll do my best for the people of Waterford. I'll be there as best I can to articulate the needs of Waterford first and the region and the island and that's the work that's undergoing at the moment. Okay, and Jason Murphy is here. He's a Fianna Fáil councillor in Waterford. He's steeped in Fianna Fáil (laughs) politics. Um, He's close with Mary Butler and Mary Butler's uh, camp, I suppose, if you want to call it like that. Uh, Jason, thank you very much for coming into us this morning. What do you have to say uh, when you hear what David's, uh, I suppose, analysis of the situation is at present? Well, first of all, um, Damien, I'd like to say that I'm talking on behalf of myself. Here this morning, as a Fianna Fáil member and and as, as a person who's 
steeped in Fianna Fáil, as you said yourself. Um, and I find myself in a lot of agreement in what uh, David has said. And first of all, I'd like to congratulate David on having a fantastic vote. It's a, an amazing vote and, I, and I've seen it coming back off the doors over the last two or three weeks. I had a feeling that was coming and congratulations to David. He's a, he's a fantastic worker for Waterford and I think we'd all agree to that. Uh, and I agree with David. I think the responsibility now is with Sinn Féin to deliver that change. Uh, Sinn Féin have a mandate. They have, they have the biggest vote marginally. And um, on Thursday, it's up to Mary Lou to see, can she put together like-minded individuals to put together a government, uh, a left-wing government? Um, if people vote for change, that's the change they voted for. I don't think uh, Fianna Fáil can be forced into a position that, that we have to dance with Sinn Féin. We've said at the very start, uh, we were open to this during the campaign, that uh, we're not going into any arrangement with Sinn Féin. Uh, because of ideological reasons, because we're not compatible uh, economically. Um, so it's up to Sinn Féin now, can they put together that on Thursday? Um, uh, David, are you up to talking to, uh, to Fianna Fáil? Do you think Jason's analysis there is correct? Well, listen, we've made it crystal clear well before the election, Damien, that we would talk to everybody. And up to a point, I think Jason is right. And I made the point myself. Of course, there is a responsibility on the party that got the popular vote, the biggest vote, to try and reach out to people of a like mind. But I think the other point to make, and I think it's one that was sidestepped by uh, a little bit uh, by Jason, is that the only way that government can be blocked, of course, because we can try and form a government, but if Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael come together, with a group of independents and others of a like mind, they can block that programme for change. So we have to manage our way through all of that. Uh, we have our job of work to do. I'm not sure what Fianna Fáil are doing in terms of reaching out to those parties. I can only tell you what we're doing. And I think there's a big difference and a striking difference between how other parties in, in the past, be it Labour and the Greens who went into government with Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael, that they forgot to go out and talk to people outside of their party which is why I think it's important I do talk to the CEO of the council and yeah, meeting and, other yeah. groups as well. well and I, I, suppose, I think Damien, all of that is important to put that uh, solid programme for government together because yeah, if I can just finish on I think point, da- da- David one, knows, um, um, in fairness to David, I think he knows full well. On this point, when okay, just, let, just let David finish yeah. the point then, Jason. Go on, David, quickly. Yeah, the, one, the one thing that I think people need most is a solid government. I don't think the people want a second election. They want politicians to get down to the business of forming a government and actually delivering on what they voted for. And that's my sole focus now over the next number of days and weeks. I'm sure it is for Fianna Fáil and others as well, but I can just give you what my focus is. OK, let Jason come back on that then. Well, I suppose when you get to this point, Damien, you, you come down to simple maths. Um, if, if Fianna Fáil lost seats in this election, so it's, it's not up to us to form a government, we went down seats. Uh, we, we came back with 38 seats. We went out with 45. So we, we, we came down seats. There's still an onus. Uh, why do you say that? It's not uh, up to you. Like, you are one of the, the three main biggest parties. Well, I think most people would agree that the election ended in a dead heat, yeah. more or less, a, a percentage here or there. Uh, so the onus is not on Fianna Fáil. And I, and I think David would agree with it. And he has said that now in, in, in his open remarks that the onus is on Mary Lou and uh, Sinn Féin to form a left-wing government. That's what they came in. They came in under, under a banner of change. Um, that's what they say people voted for. So it's up to Mary Lou to put together that change. Um, we were very clear before the election that we would not be going into any arrangement with Sinn Féin. And that's our prerogative as a political party. I mean, if you look at Sinn Féin, they stand in the north that they're not going to Westminster. And everyone respects that. So okay. people have to respect our mandate as David, well. I can just come back that we came in and said we're and not going to make an arrangement with Sinn Féin. I just want to ask uh, Jason a quick question, David, yeah. before we come back on that. Because, yeah. again, I don't want to go through policy differences here on, on this now, folks. It's, it's, it's more specific, I suppose, in terms of how this might play out in terms of uh, talks. Um, like, somebody has texted in 0833339375, Jason, that... Um, you were asked by a member of people on the doorsteps, would you go into government with Fine Gael? Uh, you said no. Yeah, now you, I did. And now you're saying potentially you might. No, I didn't. I, didn't. I don't remember when I said I potentially I might. I didn't say that in this interview anyway. Well, would you? Um, um, my position is I've made it very clear in interviews with WLR after the election that my position is that um, I don't want to have any arrangement with Fine Gael or indeed Sinn Féin. I know, but, yeah, but that's different from saying that you won't. But my, I, I've made my position very, very clear at doorsteps and on any interview I've, I've, I've given that uh, my position is that uh, our 
relationship, if you, if you want to put it that way, with Fianna Gael over the last five years have done massive damage to the Fianna Fáil vote. Is your relationship with Fine Gael worse with, than with Sinn Féin? We have no relationship with Sinn Féin, so I, do, I, I don't know. Um, um, we've been very clear coming into this election that we're not going into government with Sinn Féin uh, because of irreconcilable differences in relation to our policy. I mean, Sinn, Sinn, Sinn Féin are talking about 22 billion in spending 11 billion over the fiscal space and then delivering 3 billion in surpluses. It's undoable. And another thing that comes in, David Cullinan, and uh, te- people are texting in about this, Fianna Fáil voters and Fine Gael voters must also be respected. They voted to keep Sinn Féin out. So even though you claim that you've won the election, there's a lot of people that still voted for Fine Gael who don't have a say on this. So do you believe that... Oh, ab- absolutely. Ab- and I agree with, with, that, with that to an extent, David. And of course there are people within Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael who would, would have difficulty with going into government with Sinn Féin. Equally, I met a lot of Fianna Fáil supporters over the weekend who would have difficulty going in with Fine Gael. I think this all goes back to the pre-election uh, positions that were adopted by those parties of categorically ruling everything out and now they're stuck when the electors uh, send us a different message. Like Jason says that there's a responsibility on Sinn Féin and I've accepted that there is. But there's also a responsibility on Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael to also be part of talks. And if you go back to what Fianna Fáil were saying about Sinn Féin leading up to the election, that they didn't want to be in government, that they sat out in negotiations last time around, it seems to me that Fianna Fáil wants to sit out negotiations this time. Uh, that's not possible. There is going to have to be a government, in my view, that in, with, to some degree uh, will have to, to, to involve two or three bigger parties. And that may be either a minority government. We have a responsibility to form a government of change. That's where we want to be. Okay. And then I think the clear question is over to Fianna Fáil or Fianna Gael. Do they want to be part of that? Or are they going to come together to block that change? That's okay. what's going to come okay. down to I think everybody knows that. So a very specific question there, just following on what you said there, David. Are you um, conceding that it will not be possible for Sinn Féin to form a left-wing government? No, certainly not, because I think... That well, you just said that you, you'd expect to go into no. government with one of the two main parties, no? No, no, what I said was... No, not into government, because there's any number of possibilities. OK, just into talks. Mm. What, what I, yes, what I'm saying is that we want to form a government of change, and that will involve Sinn Féin with like-minded parties, including Labour, the Sock Dems and others. Uh, that government may need the support of one of those two parties, of course, to, to be able to operate, to nominate Taoiseach, do all of that work. My point was that the only way that a government of change can be blocked is if Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael coalesce. Now, we have already reached out to Fianna Fáil, not because we want to be... I could give you a thousand reasons. When you talk about people in Fianna Fáil who don't want to talk to Sinn Féin, there are lots of Sinn Féin <laughs> voters who would be very uncomfortable about going into government with Fianna Fáil. We all have these yeah, historic and also uh, ideological issues, but at the end of the day, a government has to be formed, and I'm bringing it back to what people voted for. Reduce the pension age to 65, build the homes that people need, equip our hospitals... Uh, yeah, 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 we know... Damien, d- 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 this, this comes down to simple yeah. mathematics at the end of the day. It comes down to simple mathematics. Fianna Fáil have no interest in blocking Sinn Féin forming a government. I encourage Sinn Féin to form a government. They went into this election and they, they've asked people to, to transfer left. And that happened, by and large, in the election that happened yeah. and people transferred left. It's up to Sinn Féin to form that government. I'm not going to block that. It's simple mathematics. But if they, if they can't, if, like the Labour Party have already said that they're not going to go in, in, into serious talks with Sinn Féin. But, so, like, it, the, is there not an onus on ye? For example... Uh, Sinn Féin a texter in said but, they'd speak to everyone Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael ruled it out they're immature and childish Sinn Féin have hammered out deals with the DUP Fianna Fáil can't yeah, even agree amongst is, themselves it, a week on and Fine Gael haven't it, even met Isn't that the point? Isn't that exactly the point? I have no input into Labour's policy If Mary Lou can get 80 people like-minded individuals to support her for, for Taoiseach Fianna Fáil are not going to block that This is democracy I have no input into, into the, Labour's the policy The DUP can talk to Sinn Féin Why can't she talk to Sinn Féin? You know, Damien, as well as I do, that's a diff- that is a, a different reality. That's a power-sharing executive that was brought into, into, into being as part of a peace process. And Fianna Fáil were a part of that, and Bertie Ahern was a part of that. We have a, a functioning government here the last 80 or 90 years. We, we have an adversarial system. It's a different system completely. You're not comparing like for like. Okay. We um, have a policy platform. Sinn Féin have a policy yeah, platform. C- come, back with that, David. come back with that, David. And I want to ask, final, I, I, I want to ask you specifically while you're coming back on that, David, I want to ask you, how long do you think this can play out? For example, former Taoiseach Bertie Ahern said yesterday he didn't expect there to be any developments in terms of formation of government before the end of March. 
what I do you think? I think it will play out, Damien. I think it will play out for as long as people are play acting. And I think that's what people will be hearing when they, they listen to programmes like this. You have to be open to talking to everybody. And what I would say to Jason, and you know, he has uh, respected the mandate that I got, the vote that I got. I respect the fact that Mary Butler was voted as a Fianna Fáil TD. Just imagine for a second if Mary and myself were sitting down talking about how we could deliver in government for Waterford in the South East. The airport, the university, uh, the cardiac care, uh, the North East development and having people in government who can actually drive that across a cabinet table and deliver. That's the vision that we need to have for Waterford. Fine Gael doesn't have any TD uh, representing this constituency. So we have to put, yes, we have to all think nationally. And I know that Adam Wise came out and made some very strong comments as well yes. in relation to Fianna Fáil talking to Sinn Féin. Let's look at what's best for the people who voted in this election. I genuinely believe, and I think all commentators, they mean believe that there was a huge appetite for change. We want to be part of that. Hmm. We won't be found wanting. I'm here this morning in Dublin. I'm working as hard as I can. I'll continue to work as hard as I can. I know. If the door is shut by Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael. I can't stop that. We're not shutting I'll, any I'll, doors. I'll talk to anybody then. Jason says. Jason says they're not. Sh- um, I mean, they're not for, shutting any. Well, well, Jason Murphy, for, are, are you play acting? Jason no. Murphy? First of all, there's no play acting going on here. Um, David knows exactly what's required. He has to get to eighty. That's that's the simple mathematics of it. They have to get like-minded individuals to get to eighty. Fianna Fáil are not blocking that. Mary Lou will go into the doll on Thursday. She, I, I presume, she'll put herself up for Taoiseach. Fianna Fáil won't block that. If, she, if Mary Lou can get to 80, we can't do anything about that. I think if anyone's play acting here, it's David. Um, I mean, they have spent the last five years castigating Fianna Fáil and now they want us to David, dance with them in government. David, you're I mean, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. I mean, OK, let David, let David answer that. Well, listen, I think people will make up their own minds on what I'm doing today and what I will be doing over the next few days. I'm only making the point, Damien, and I think it's logical and factual that the only way that... I think that, uh, uh, that, uh, um, that Jason has been disingenuous when he says that they can't block us. Of course, if Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael with a group of independents come together, they can form a government, which is their right if that's what they want to do. My point is, I don't believe that's what people want. So they have the numbers to do that if they so wish. And I think I'm, I'm, I'm not really that interested in getting into rows with, with Jason. I'm more concerned about how can Jason and I and others in Fianna Fáil and Mary Butler advance what's best for <laughs> Well, Mary Fáil. couldn't make it today because she's, she, she's away and he, we wanted to have this little debate and I think it's important to have it. Uh, come I, back I, in there, Jason. Yeah. Damien, I, I think that this, the word disingenuous is the most overly used word in politics at the moment. Um, Sinn Féin had a policy for the last five years of castigating Fianna Fáil, uh, you know, of, of holding us to account, and that's their, that's their prerogative. And now they want us to dance in a room with them. I think, I think David has been disingenuous to his own supporters, Ed, when he says he wants to go in there with Fianna Fáil. That's, that's the appearance People of are asking for Adam Wise to come on as well to give the opposite view. Loads of people texting in that Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael are behaving like spoiled kids. Others saying that Sinn Féin only got one in four votes. Listen, gentlemen, I know you have to go back, David. I appreciate you coming out. We'll have you on maybe, 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 maybe next Monday again, OK? Thank you. Take Appreciate care. it. Thank you very much. Jason Murphy, we could talk about this all day. Let's see how the, the next few days play out. Thank As a, a number of people said, uh, should Mary be on? Mary's away at present uh, for a few days and we will we'll ask Mary to come on maybe later in the week, see how things go. Uh, Jason Murphy, thank you very much. Thanks, David. Uh, back with more dancing, Mary Kennedy. Now, I'm going to talk to Mary Kennedy in a second. Just to remind you, your text line and WhatsApp, line 83 975 You can call 051-846-123. Laura is there waiting for your calls. Angela phoned a second ago, wants to know, do these politicians get paid while well, they're making up their minds? Stop their wages, that'll happen lively enough. Other people texting, and a lot of texts coming in about the, um, the negotiations and the dancing that goes on between politicians. Speaking of dancing, Mary Kennedy, good morning. Hi, Damien. How are you? I'm very well, a bit tired and very relieved and very thankful to be uh, (laughs) dancing for another week. Absolutely. And can I just start by saying thank you to everybody who has voted to keep myself and John in the competition. And I know there are a lot of them in the day show because... uh, there's a, a lot of people that support us. So very thankful for that. You're very welcome. And I know there's a lot of people, as you say, pushing the votes and Brian Walsh and Melanie and everybody and Susie and yeah, everybody. And there's a lot of connections here because you've done a lot of work with Nationwide over the years down here. Yeah. But yeah. apart from that, you're coming across very well on the show. I was watching last night as well your reaction when the dance-off uh, last three were announced. And when you were when it was said in no particular order that you were going through to the next round, the, your expression Could you was. See, I was relieved. Oh, I'm relieved. Your expression was priceless. Priceless. I haven't, I haven't seen it back yet. 
but ah. I'm so ready. Because just to remind but people... I'm really looking forward to dancing with the orchestra. And it'll be a very special, like, uplifting occasion. So I was thrilled. But I have to say, everybody is very sad to see Brian because he was a, a go. He was a breath of fresh air. The funniest person and the kindest, loveliest person you could come across in a day's walking. Yeah. He... Um he, as people may not know, Dancing with the Stars on RT last night, he was the one who had to have a dance-off with Sinead and he, he's gone now. But um, in the build-up to the, the dance-off, you were you were second from the bottom, I think. I think Father, our priestly friend, was, yeah. was at the bottom. So the, 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 yeah, the, voting, so, I mean, the voting from the public, the voting from the public brought you up uh, considerably, obviously. And, uh, well, yeah. I mean, the, the judges have, have not been terribly kind to me over the week. No. They, I thought that we would. I actually thought our dance last night deserved a little bit more than it got from the judges. But that's that's them and that's their opinion. And they are the experts. So you just have to suck it up. And uh, I must say, though, if both John and I really, really enjoyed the whole week of preparing for mm. that dance. And the fact that my brother and his wife and daughter, who are Dermot's parents and sister, were in the audience, was very special. It really, really was. And they were chill. And in terms of those judges, are you, um, are you fearful of them when they come out? Like, you know, it's, 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 it's a strange thing, isn't it? Because you're normally in control of a television situation, whether it be oh. doing reports. And now you're at the whim of their mercy. Well, you, I mean, you really have to be prepared to show your vulnerability and to allow yourself to be vulnerable to take part in a in a in a, a competition like this and um but i don't think there's any harm in doing that because it shows another part of you i mean yes you're right i'd be in control of work that i'd be doing on television this is way outside my comfort zone and you know, it is a television program after all uh, like yesterday afternoon i had lunch uh, sitting at the same table as Lorraine and Brian. And there'd be lots of chat, and lots of banter. And you just, you know, it'd be the same next week. There's absolutely no kind of grudge kept, just the way they, they are. And they are yeah. very, very professional. And that's what really gets me is they say really nice things and they, you know, about the improvement and all the rest. <laughs> they just, wham! <laughs> We're 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 pushing you here uh, in a big way. We've oh, we, we've adopted you in the station to uh, <laughs> so uh, fair play to you, and it's great. And listen, no matter what what happens next, Mary, you've you've done brilliant, and fair play to you. Uh, and yeah, thank you. Well, I, I really hope that people who might be watching and would say, "Wow, you know, there's a chasm in terms of age between her and most of the other people." That you know, let's do it. It's just the most wonderful thing to take something on that's new and that's challenging and uh, I mean the fitness is great all the, the, the post-Christmas lab is gone it's brilliant and John is absolutely fading away <laughs> it's killing me that he's losing more weight than I am and you didn't have any to lose anyway no he does not no. but he's lovely he's really really nice and a wonderful teacher I know you're getting back into it this morning. Mary, as ever, God bless and thank you so much. We'll talk to you soon, okay? okay? Thanks, Damien. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you, Mary. Mary Kennedy there from Dancing with the Stars. And uh, please do support Mary. We'd love to see Mary do well on that. And she is doing brilliant. Coming up, more of your texts and comments. Michal Martin as Taoiseach will be a disaster for Waterford. He wouldn't even visit the county before the election, says Paul. Jason's party, Fianna Fáil, castigated Fine Gael since the formation of the state, but they still propped up Fine Gael in government. Um, Damien, are the other parties not damned if they go in with Sinn Féin and damned if they don't? If Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael go into government with Sinn Féin, it would only be a matter of time before Sinn Féin brought the government down to go back to the polls and run more candidates to try and form a majority government. Other people saying, I hope uh, we can hear what the two parties are doing, supporting the rich people, pushing their own agenda. The only people that stood up for the poor are Sinn Féin. Damien, can we hear Adam Wise on this? The only Fianna Fáiler locally with some common sense. Keep your texts and your comments coming in. We have an inspirational Kerry teenager, paralysed from the neck down, who's going to be talking to us next. Now, welcome back to the programme. I am joined now by Ian O'Connell. Good morning, Ian. Morning, Damien. How's it going? Good, good. How are you? Good, thanks. And your dad, how's it going? Hi, how are you? First name again, please, sir. Michael. Michael. How are you, Michael? Very good, thanks. Where are you from, Ian? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm from Killarney in County Kerry. I'm doing the Leaving Cert at the moment and 18 years old. 
It's a normal young fella getting on with life. You were on the Late Late Show, I think. Some people would remember from that, wouldn't they? I was, yeah. I was on it uh, just under two years ago. Is it two years ago now you were? Just under two years, I'd say, yeah. Wow. Flew. Flew by. Uh, tell me a little bit about what happened to you. Um, so I was out one day cycling in Clarny with a few friends. And we were cycling Clarny, in Muckers in Clarny. It's a kind of a national park. And I was... I was just going down a hill, cycling down. It was kind of a walking path and there was a bit of a log and it had been cut and left there and it kind of went to overgrown a grass and my front wheel of the bike hit the log and I went straight over the handlebars and straight away I knew something was wrong. You know, I heard a crack in my neck and last feeling from the shoulders down. How long did it take before you were diagnosed as that, that, that this was going to be life changing was it kind of straight away or um, I suppose from the kind of assessment they'd done when I was on the ground they had a fair idea but I went to Tralee General then and I was there for 10 days and that just kind of seemed like endless MRIs x-rays and stuff then they know, they told me that I had complete spinal injury at C4 four bones in the bo- neck broke severed spinal cord I developed a collapsed lung and a bleed to the brain. But uh, I'm back now, like, lost my speech and everything, but they can't shut me up talking now. <laughs> Where were you, Mike, when it happened? Um, I was at home. We got the phone call. Um, Just pull that a little bit closer to you there. Perfect, yeah. I uh, was at home. We got the phone call. Um, his friend, Michael, rang to say that he was after being involved in an accident. So we were about five minutes drive away from the where there's the scene where it actually happened. So we went straight out there. The ambulance was after being called at this stage. So um his buddy, his four friends were with him. So in fairness they stayed with him all the time. He uh one thing he did do, he gave him a good bit of advice what to do while he was waiting for the ambulance, which was, they said, which was vital. Well, vital, they didn't move him like or anything. So that really just don't move whatsoever mm. came into yeah. it. Yeah. Because if you had moved, it could have been worse. Could have been worse. Like my, I broke my C3 vertebrae, which is just the third one down, like which, like they said, if it had been the vertebrae above it, could have been lights out, you know, you have to look at it that way. So it was just my first instinct I goes to the lads, I said, just not to move me. I don't know how it came into my head, but I just kind of figured, like, if I can't move myself, just wait till the experts arrive. What? Were you conscious all the time? Yeah, I stay conscious all the time. Like that feeling of... Does terror come over? Does it grip you? Do you think, I can't feel any... Like, what? Oh, 100%. Describe like, that for me. I... But the minute, like I said, the minute I fell, I heard the crack. And then, like you do when you fall, you just go to get back up. But I knew, realised straight away nothing was moving. And, like, at the start, you know, my friends, they didn't know if I was being serious or not. Because we f- fell off our bike, you know. Growing up, we got up, but... Yeah, it was a scary feeling, like it's hard, it's hard to describe. You're here in a wheelchair, a fully automated wheelchair. Yeah. You're, you can't move your, your hands even. Not You're... yet, not yet. <laughs> Coming. <laughs> and you are, um, I suppose everything has to be done. Is that the situation, Mike? Yeah, he's this 24 hour care for him. If you want to see how good... Um, He's good help at home from the HSC and everything. He's he has a PA with him every morning mm. from eight until five. Um, his carers are outstanding. I couldn't say they're like family. They're like family, you couldn't say enough about him. And what was what was what's it been like for the family to deal and to know that your lives have changed forever as well. Like again, I can't. You can't compare one with the other, but, right. but do you know what I mean? How do how do you how do you figure that out? 
I just, I mean, from, from day one, like, he's, it was very, very hard. He was, he said he spent 10 nights in Chile. He was transferred in to the Mater Hospital in Dublin where he had his operation. Um, my wife, Nora, stayed above there. He was in Dublin for nine months between the Mater and the National Rehab in Dunleary. Nora stayed with him constant above all the time. She stayed the nine months with him. I used to come up and down at the weekends. Um, he was left home for the first time for St. Patrick's weekend, for the weekend, so... <laughs> was a big a smile on your head there now. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit of fresh air that weekend in Killarney. That must have been an amazing... It was, yeah, 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 definitely. I suppose talking about fresh air, like, I was on a ventilator for just over two months. Like, I had the tracheostomy in my neck breathing for me. And they said, like... They told me basically I more than likely will be on it for the rest of my life. Then, do you know, that was my biggest goal to get off that. And then 80 days later, I took my, fir- my first breath of fresh air outside in Dublin. But, like, that was one of the biggest things I've had to overcome. Like, I mean, I've had to overcome so much. Get my speech back before Christmas there. October, I got a clot in the lung, which was obviously another massive setback. But, like, you know, I've just kind of learned to deal that these things are going to come my way, but just have to keep going. Um, we have recorded some of that for Facebook for later just to, to show people because I want to talk to you now, I suppose, about... Are you a, a spiritual person? Are you one of these people that feels this happened for a reason or do you hate the fact that it happened? Or how do you, how do you try to comprehend... Um, I suppose when I was in hospital there was always the why me factor but then the more I asked myself do you know why me I kind of say why anyone else do you know why would anyone deserve to go through something like this but I uh, from since the accident happened I've obviously have take things for granted before the accident but I I, I do deep down I think it did it, it, it had happened for a reason like, as I say, I was supposed to fly out to Spain the day after the accident. So I just think maybe something worse might have happened over there. Maybe this was put in my way to stop me to going to Spain. Do you know, but there was always that factor. I know you're you're in Waterford at Waterford Crystal and Derek McGrath, former Waterford hurling manager, was the person who got in touch with us originally about this uh, to have a chat with you. So with that, um, you're not giving an actual talk tonight uh, or today, but you're, what time are you out at Waterford Crystal? Around the we're, after- we're going out there now. Around straight afterwards. Straight around 12 o'clock. Are you yeah. going out for a tour, is it? And out for a tour and a, a boy to grow after. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, and you go around, you, you, you do talks, you do inspirational talks. Um, yeah. So that ties in with what I said to you a second ago. Do you think then that you're going to use what's happened to you to help inspire people? Yeah, 100%, like I suppose. Since I got out of hospital, I've been sharing my life on social media, like on my Instagram and Facebook. I try and get a post out every day, like, you know, just showing how I'm living my life with a disability. And I've done a lot of talks since. I'm just trying to, you know, life can change in the blink of an eye. Like it did for me, and I just want people, you know, to realise that, like the small things I had taken for granted before, scratching my nose, you know, like I was saying to my dad one day, you know, if I need someone, say to scratch my head, and I'm like a bit left up down. <laughs> when I catch the spot, it's better than winning the lottery, you know. <laughs> There's, but I'm, but yeah, I'm going. That's my plan to try and use what's happened to me. You can't scratch your nose. No. You can't lift your hand up there. Now, I can see some movement in your, your, your arms yeah, a little bit. The but left you, one is coming. The left one's coming a little bit and it's going up slightly off the the, yeah. the, the rest of the uh, wheelchair up to just below your, your chest. Yeah. But you can't lift it any higher. No. Like, I suppose, when the accident happened, it, um, I could only move my eyes when the accident happened. Wow. Tell us about the... 
the recovery of the hand movement and how's that working like? It's going good at the moment. He, I mean, he's nothing from the, the wrist out. No movement in fingers or nothing. It's just he's... Uh, just the arm parts is coming in there good now on the left hand side. And what have the doctors said in terms of um, recovery, if that's the right word? Well, they gave him no hope of, of anything moving like. At the, start. At all. at the start. No hope at all. It's just so hard to tell like, because like mine is a complete injury, which means like I could, there's an incomplete and complete. An incomplete is when you just break bones in your neck. But like, I severed the spinal cord as well. Like my mum, my mum told me never do half a job, so I said I'd do the whole hog when I'm going doing it. <laughs> uh, it's Ian O'Connell three two one is your Instagram address. You've over sixty thousand followers on Instagram. Um, it's it is inspiring. It yeah. is inspiring. No matter how you, you talk, the HSE and the facilities and uh, have been very good, haven't they? Yes, they have. Yeah. Like people yeah. give out about the health service sometimes, yeah. but sometimes when it comes to things like this, yeah, the the care has been second to none. Yeah, yeah, oh, definitely, unbelievable, definitely. Yeah. Even support in general, like all around support from friends, friends like and family, and you've probably heard of the All Ireland the Golf Challenge. Yes, I was beneficiary for that. There two years ago, Michael Ling Motor and Kilkenny they got together. Yeah, they had a do and they got me a wheelchair accessible car. Mm. And then just to say, this year it's for Down syndrome. It's for um, Watford and South Kilkenny. It's on in the September the eleventh and twelfth. The Kane Kane and Group are sponsoring again. Excellent. Like they've changed my life with the car. If anybody wants to go and meet you down at Waterford Crystal, can they go and say hello to you now in a little they while can. if they can? Bodyguard Pepperetti, anyone? <laughs> <laughs> um, just have to get on with it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, just have to get on, yeah. We um, had to move house. We sold our house. We just bought a house about five minutes drive away from where we used to live in Killarney. Um, we to adapt that for his needs. Um, lovely place, White Bridge Manor in Killarney. Lovely, lovely spot. Um, and well, uh, did you have to pay for that yourselves and all that sort of stuff? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Listen, yeah. thanks, thanks for coming in. Really yeah. appreciate it. Um, Ian, if you're down again, will you come down again and we'll do a, a bigger chat as well if there's something else you know. We'll yeah, hundred percent. Uh, I know Derek speaks very, very highly of you and uh, what you have to say and I presume you'll be making a career out of this, maybe. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. There's another man there. We'd, we'd just like to say big thanks to Liam Daniels. Oh, Liam is great. And Nicky Murphy here in Watford. Yeah. And, I mean, the the people that sponsored Ian there in in the GA Challenge there at that time. Yeah. Which was on in Monaghan. But the, it was... Unreal. We couldn't be thankful enough to them. Yeah, he yeah. was like my second father, friends for life. Yeah, yes, he he's great, and everybody involved with it. Yeah, yeah, fair play yeah, to yeah. you. And, and Vanessa there and Kane in as well has been very good to Ian at the moment. Super. Yeah. The next time you'll be down to see us, you'll be scratching the nose. I will. I'll be shaking your hand. <laughs> Listen, thanks. Thanks, William. Really. Yeah. Mind yourself. God Thank bless. Thank you very much. Thanks, thanks very much. Thank you. Now, a lot of texts and comments still to read out regarding the political scene. We'll come to that in a little while. Uh, texts are in regarding querying on the NCT. I'll come to that as well. Posters, deadline for taking the election posters down. We think it was yesterday. We'll just double check that. Uh, Gavin Whelan, good morning. Morning, Damien. How are things? Good, thank you. Yeah, Julie, our producer, just texted. Posters must be removed within seven days of polling day. Uh, within seven days of polling day. So, um you're going to get some people worried about getting fined. Uh, we're going to talk about the future. We're going to talk about the things that are happening later in the week. Let's talk about the past first and um, the death of Harry Gregg, uh, Man United legend mm. and one of the uh, survivors of the Munich air crash. He died uh, over the weekend. Yeah, very sad news. Yeah, what a what an ambassador, really. What a what a talent. What a menace was really. You know what I mean? And obviously, great tributes uh, flowing in across uh, social media and that, and particularly on the various Manchester United pages during the week, uh, Damien. So yeah, quite a quite a sad occasion. Yeah, and Julie managed to get a little clip, one of the nice clips about him talking with Sunday Sport and RTE. If I had been born a rich man, I would have paid twenty five thousand seven hundred to join that group of players. That was that special. Yeah, I do. Honestly, I was lucky enough to become one of them. I was lucky enough to 
play with lads. I was lucky enough for one of them to say to me, hey, big man, keep going out. I was lucky enough that the man that signed me didn't tell me how to play and didn't tell his players how to play. He told them, if you weren't good enough, you wouldn't be here. That era, that time, not because I played in it, was the best of English football, and I joined, without the slightest doubt, the best of the best. I mean, there's... That is my opinion. Nobody will change that. They weren't fortunate enough to be allowed to go on and prove what I believe. And I know there'll be more tributes tonight. Man United are playing Chelsea tonight. Uh, yeah, it'll be a kind of poignant enough uh, moment, won't it? Of course, uh, you know, United are so with ninth now. Chelsea, of course, uh, have the chance to, I suppose, you know, try and cement their Champions League place. Uh, should be interesting, you know, 8 o'clock over there in uh, Stamford Bridge. You'd have to say Chelsea probably, you know, going on form would be fancy going into it. But then again, United are always prone to when they're written off, they can always kind of raise their game. So I know you'll be hoping they can put in a good performance then, but you'd have, to, you'd have to give Chelsea the nod, you know. We will certainly. Uh, the hurling obviously cancelled at the weekend. Yeah. Uh, Storm Dennis, of course. Yeah, other matches did go ahead. Big matches coming up this week. Tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, of course. Well, I suppose the big week, I suppose it's hard to believe that the Munster Championship is commencing for uh, the Waterford Under-20 footballers who are the first team to, to into championship action Wednesday night. Um, quite bizarre, I suppose, considering it was the 2nd of July last year. So, like, in you know, I suppose from our point of view, it is very early, like, you know what I mean? But, uh, look, we've, we've worked as hard as we c- uh, could. Last week's have been difficult because trying to get pitches and, you know what I mean, in fairness. You're it's, involved it's, in the yeah, management the 20s, setup. Yeah, there, yeah, yeah. Like, and it's been really, really hard. And um, do you know what I mean? Again, and it's, it's, I suppose it's so early and then you've guys I suppose doing college exams the pre-leaving cert is just finished so it has been difficult but any time we've asked to call the lads in they've worked really hard you know Kenny Hassett Rock Ormock's come in as coach uh, replacing Gary Herney this year he's been absolutely brilliant he's got a great response and, um, and so uh, we're, just, we're looking little, forward to Wednesday we've, you know? we've a little clip of Kenny uh, tell me about this clip yeah so, well, I suppose he's talking about the length of the journey Milton Malway as well which we're, we're, you know, we're not happy really Claire and Claire decided to put the match on in the far end 7 of o'clock Wednesday night yeah well I suppose look they're at home end. it is their choice at the end of the day like you know what I mean but like I suppose ah, Feckers. When there's well, license, second, license six mile bridge as well, it would have been would have been handier. But look, it is, it is what it is, I suppose. Here's Kenny talking about it. Kenny has it. Yeah, it's a long spin. Um, there's no denying that. It's the heartland of Clare football. Is, is West Clare, and you know they're not going to make it easy. And, and why should they? Uh, they have home advantage. We had them in Dungarvan last year, and luckily got the win. Hopefully, we get the same result this time. Um, it, it, it is an early start it's tough on you know parents or supporters who want to travel to be up in Milltown Malbay for 7 o'clock on a Wednesday evening but it is what it is and we just we just have to go along with it Yeah so we think it's around a three and a half hour journey by uh, by bus uh, obviously depending what part of Waterford you're leaving from and that's tr- 7 o'clock throw in on Wednesday evening and Colin Foley is the, the joint captain yeah Under Yeah 20. along with Liam Fennell yeah Here's a little clip of Colin Yeah um Look, I wasn't really expecting an hour at him, but um, I'll try my best, I suppose, to lead the team. Me and Liam Fenn, joint captains, and we uh, sure we'll do our best. And um, as you said, I'm here now for the next two years and hopefully get a good few two years in here now. He's a very modest young man. Fair play to him. And, yeah, uh, Captain the Miners last year, so I suppose he was, he'd say there, he was kind of maybe shocked when he got the call. But himself and Liam are two great ambassadors. Liam was on the team last year. Um, of course, that Betclare. So there is a couple of lads there for there from last year who Betclare. The Benham in the Miner as well last year. So I think that confidence is, 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 is what the lads can take into Wednesday night. We know it's going to be a difficult challenge. Uh, Clare playing at home, you know, they'll have the backing of a huge home crowd and it's tough on our supporters to try and ask him to be in Milltown on, at 7 o'clock on Wednesday evening. But look, it is what it is. We've prepared well. We've last kick around now tonight and we'll, we'll name the team and that kind of thing. But um, it's been very enjoyable it's been hard like you know this stage of the year I, I, I kind of question it like you know what I mean midweek like why weren't these games played on a weekend when every other competition is, is played on a weekend but look it is what it is we've just have to get on with it now and look it won't be for the one to try and we're going to leave Everton out in the field Wednesday and you know if we're in that game of 10 minutes to go I mean I tell you we won't be far away yeah, we've got some texts about, I suppose, the, the relationship between hurling and football in the under-17s, under-18s, 19s, 20s. So we'll talk about that uh, as the as the season progresses. Uh, how did the basketball get on over the weekend? Yeah, the basketball, they were, WT Vikings were beaten there on Saturday night and the Wildcats, of course, were unlucky as well in their couple of games. Uh, they have another game coming up this weekend at home. Uh, the WT Wildcats, great occasion Saturday. Their under-20s were presented with the, or they were honoured uh, just in the Mercy Hall. Uh, they won the National Cup there recently. So that was a nice touch on, uh, for, on that. 
uh, Saturday night up there in the Mercy Gym. So they're kind of coming into the close season there now. Wildcats still would still be in a great chance of getting into the playoffs. Uh, they play at home uh, this weekend to Glanmire and WT Vikings are also at home there, home to IT Carlo. So a nice Southeast Derby in the WT Arena Saturday night. So yeah, another busy weekend. Of course, the soccer as well had a great start just to not touch on Friday night. Of course, really, now, yeah, really right. enjoyable. We got back from uh, Richmond Park in one piece anyway. So it was a great start, you know, really good game for nil nil. Even there was plenty of chances. Um, Kevin O'Connor took the goal well. Brian Murphy, I thought, heroic in the goal just to be there and watch some of those saves was, was unbelievable, you know. And uh, what an addition he's going to be. And you know, eight new players, they all adjusted themselves well. You could see what the, you know, they did a great home uh, support up there as well. A couple of bus loads travelled up, and uh, of course, it leads nicely into the Bows game now at home Friday night. That's going to be an absolute cracker. And then you've had all the away games and need all our coverage, you know, it's brilliant to have that. And uh, yeah, good reaction to the to the match as well the other night. So myself and Matt, you know, throwing the odd bit of banter, so you need a bit of that as well. But um, Listen, yeah, if so. I don't see you before Wednesday, I the very best look to you, yeah, thanks, yeah. Oh, yeah, look, we'll, we'll give it everything. Look, anyone who is around, I know it's a long journey, but we would appreciate uh, any bit of support. And sure, please God, if we can we can get over the line. Best of luck. Thanks, Thanks very much, cheers. Gavin Whelan. Thank you. Now, as I say, a lot of texts and comments coming in. A query regarding the NCT. This person is asking if anybody's in the same boat. The car had the NCT last week, hadn't the full test. As we all know, they can't do it at the moment. The car failed for a light bulb not working. I didn't question it. Was a bit shocked and failed. Thought that was just a visual. Just get it done and a recheck. But no, it was a retest. Since when is that? A retest. Garage was shocked to hear it was a retest. It's a money racket, says this person. I'll text, I'll question it when I'm back. Have any of your listeners had the same experience? So it was just a light bulb not working. I, th- I thought it was just a recheck rather than a retest. I think you're right there on that. We'll follow that up and here we have Liz with the news at 11.